Fred Porcio, topvelocity.net, Thrix Pitch Analysis here of Jacob Vernon. Coming out of leg lift here, we can see just before leg drive, as front foot opens, back knee goes down pretty early. So we don't really get to that what's called linear force vector. We can see also to the trunk is in a, in a lot of contralateral tilt. If we look here, the chest bend uh, sideways. Well, actually because we haven't rotated yet, but 41 degrees forward. So a big lean forward. And the force vector, that ankle to knee on the back side and the back leg isn't really linear. We want to get somewhere to a linear position. So if I busted out the hand tool here, I want to be in a more linear position here, hips out here, front leg out here, uh, when I'm ready to drive and create that force back into the rubber. So front foot opens and back knee goes really quick. Also too, when I see that front foot open quick like this, when I see when, or when this opens, I see this go down really fast. We're not, we don't have a lot of mobility in abduction. Um, we don't have probably even a lot of mobility in internal external rotation. So there's somewhere in the hip mobility that's causing that back knee to follow so quickly with the front leg um, as we as we open. But even you know even though it goes early and there's not a lot of drive, the hips do rotate ahead of the shoulders slightly. So if we look at the kinematic sequencing, we see that uh, right here, the hips do peak before the trunk, and then the, tr then the glove side, which is the blue line, uh, goes, and then the trunk goes. So there is, there is some decent sequencing here. It's just, notice when the, the red line, the hips peak, it slows down, and then they pick up again. This should be one hump. So if I get that drawing tool out again, this should be one, oh, it won't let me draw in there, it should be one hump, and for some reason it won't let me draw in here, but that's okay. There should be one hump of the red line. You were seeing two humps. And that's because the back knee turns down and it starts rotation, but there's no power and then it slows down and then the front foot lands and then the power kicks up. If we were actually driving, Jacob was driving, we'd see that, that there wouldn't be that dip in between or in the hump, making two humps, it'd be one full hump. You can also see the glove side right here on the blue line is pulling before the trunk, the green line here. Those need to go together. So if you notice when the hips stop peaking in the red line right here and start to go down, notice how the glove picks up. It's trying to keep the, 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 the hips and the trunk rotating or the hips and start the trunk rotating uh, because of the loss of power through the hip. So that's what that collapsing is doing if we look at it biomechanically. So when the hips do finally open, there really isn't much separation. So we put the hip line and shoulder line up, we can see, oh, now my drawing tool wants to work. Let's shut off my drawing tool. I'm going to reset, pull these up again. You can see that there's no separation really between the two. Uh, initially, you can see the hips wanted to start, but then they just slowed down, and that's when the glove pulled, and everything sinks up pretty quick. And then because of that, you don't get a lot of forward trunk to release. You know, this is release right here. And you look at the trunk orientation, you can see the trunk is only 42 degrees forward. Actually, it isn't probably too bad on the trunk orientation. It's probably just the front leg is, is in a more vertical position. So really not behind the front leg, really pushing out over the front leg um, because rotation took off. But I mean, there is a positive front foot strike, stabilized as well. And there's a little extension here as trunk wants to push out forward. Uh, but a, it'd be a lot more dynamic if we got the momentum down the mountain through the back leg hitting front leg And then that front leg really being able to push back into that we would have seen a lot more trunk energy And if we would have separated uh, you'd have seen a lot uh, Once again a lot more trunk energy going forward at pitch release um, If we go back well, we're already there. Let's see contralateral tilt is 23 degrees. It's not too excessive That's tilting to the glove side when you get over 25, what happens is ball speeds stop going up and, and arm torques continue to go up. So not too uh, much pull, but there is, there's close to enough. And like I said, it's uh, overcompensating for the lack of linear momentum down the mound. 
because the force vector got never got linear the trunk was leaning over so working on really getting more forward and down at the same rate so if i go back to the drawing tool here i think this is really the keys going forward is going to be keeping the hips moving and more forward and down the same rate trying to get the hips to here and then we're gonna have to work on a lot of hip mobility to get there loss of strength and power but trying to get to this kind of position with with the leg that might be too far maybe somewhere up here but still more in that linear force vector here in that angle and that would allow a, a, a position to drive and accelerate and push the hips through to where the hips aren't um, just turning over and losing power so going forward really needs to be the focus um, to really get more power through the hips and get more ground force to support all that linear momentum.